Saturday, September 3rd, 2016. Dr. Kong Yuan, founder of Topayo Vets. Okay, uh, this video is the conclusion of the surgery on this bare cup who has bilateral, sublingual, mucosils or ranulas. Now, the, the operation has been done and the follow-up eight weeks later has been shown that there is a recurrence. So now what I'm presenting now is my own personal opinion on this operation, which is not a simple operation if you do it uh, by excising the sublingual salivary gland because the area is full of nerves and blood vessels. So the other method was muscularization, which uh, had been done at uh, the Royal Asia Veterinary Surgery in Yangon. Now we go, go for, for general, general uh, anatomy first, from, from small animal surgery by Fossum, fourth edition. Now, the bear, the bear had this uh, sublingual mucosil, which is similar to this in the dog, and it becomes bigger and bigger, as you can see, even in this case. In the bear, you can see from the previous video that it had two large swellings below the tongue, the left and the right. In this case, it was only the left. And it is called the sublingual mucosil or ranula. And usually it's lo located on the lateral, the side of the tongue, in the sublingual, sublingual means below the tongue tissue. Uh, in this case, there's an ulcer here, but uh, in the bed, there was no ulcer. You can see there's an ulcer here. Now, on the, on, on the aspect of the anatomy, I'll uh, come here, which is from reference from Small Animal 4th edition, Fossil now. Now, we have a surgical anatomy now in the, in the dog. I, I presume that the same in the bear. There are four salivary glands. It's called parotid. Zygomatic, mandibular gland, and sublingual gland. So there are four salivary glands in the dog. And uh, in this instance, you can see that there's a lot of veins. Uh, the nerves are not drawn, but there are a lot of nerves here as well. But the veins, the maxillary and lingual fascia veins, crosses this area. And also there are facial nerves. So this area is a very difficult area to operate unless the vet is very highly experienced and specialized. I would say that it is better not to, not to get involved in this uh, area. So the other possibility is called, called mapulsialization of a ranula. In this case, the big swelling there the vet cuts away an elliptical piece of the mucosa and granulation tissue. Cut the piece, so now you see the hole here. And in this hole, which you saw in the video as well, on the bare cup, the vet will just stitch up the mucosa, this is the mucosa, to the, to the lining of the mucosil the lining of mucosil and mucosa stitch up together. So in theory, in theory, the saliva will just flow out, flow out here, you see? It flows out here, in this hole. And then uh, there will be no more swelling, in theory. In theory, the, the saliva from the duct, the duct here, from the, the glands, salivary gland, the saliva flows out here, flows out here and then you solve the problem, there's no more swelling. This is the lower part of the tongue and you can see this is the duct. And, uh, and of course, this is another, the opening of the, this is the mandibular duct, okay, mandibular duct where the salivary glands, saliva flows up here. So in this case, in this bear, the swelling was here. So there was an obstruction. So the obstruction is here. So that's why granulation tissue, edema, and swelling on both sides. This is only shown on the left side. Now, so the vet, 
or any vet who treated this by marsupialization, that's the name of the surgery, cut a, cut an, a big piece of elliptical piece of mucosa and the granulation tissue because the whole thing is swollen, it's granulation tissue. And uh, so you show, I show you here. So in this case, in this case, you can see this is the granulation tissue because all the saliva leaked into here, but it cannot come out because there's a blockage here. So this is a granulation tissue. This is a mucus tube on ran, uh, a granular, a granular. Okay. So the marsupialization process is just to cut a piece of it off. Yeah, let me the swelling cut off, and you can see a hole has in the video. You can see the hole now. Actually, I could see also Dr. Uh, Bacon has shown there's an opening there. That opening she showed, if you can see in the video, is actually the, the opening of the mandibular duct. Okay, mandibular duct, which is connected to the sublingual, sublingual salivary gland. Now, the problem is in this bear is because this duct becomes close up again. So eight weeks later, we see, we see the tongue again. The two swellings are there. That's because the duct, the duct has been obstructed again. So this is one of the reason why there's a recurrence again of the, of the ranulas. And uh, in this case, how to prevent, how to prevent this opening from being close up. Now in, 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 in the bear, of course it's difficult because it's a wild animal, you cannot be really uh, checking it every day because it's a wild animal. So the obstruction again comes up and of course granulation tissue covers up the whole thing again and you can see that uh, in the, in the video that the whole thing is obstructed. Now, this happens in a dog as well, in this surgery called marsupialization. So what, what, what can be done in this bear? Now, I was thinking, of course this is not, not practical, you can put like in the cat pet, pet uh, in, the, in the dog urethra, urethrostomy, you put a catheter in, and then you, you stitch up the catheter, this is a catheter, so that uh, in this case, the opening remains. You stitch up a catheter in, inside here, a catheter inside the, the mandibular duct. Okay, I call this the mandibular duct. The mandibular duct, you put a catheter in and stitch up so that, so that the duct remains open for until the, the healing is done. You see, now that is done in, in the dog uh, urethrostomy. Otherwise, the urethra closes up, then uh, the urine can't come out, you see. So that, that is the thing we do in the dog. But in, in this bear, how are you going to put the catheter in? Because this is the tongue. This is the tongue. And uh, this is not practical, but I'm just saying that there is one possibility so that the mandibular duct becomes open while the rest can, can heal up. Then, so finally you will get, you will get in theory, once you do this, then you might get a hole like that. Whereas the other part will be all, all uh, granulated, close up because uh, the bear is uh, difficult to, to clean here. There, there's no way you can clean up. Huh? So then the saliva will come up from here. And so there's no more swelling due to the, the, the saliva being able to flow up from the sublingual gland through the mandibular duct. Okay, that, that is ideal. Now, the other thing is, uh, it's possible that anti-inflammatory antibodies should be given for 7 to 14 days before surgery to bring out the swelling and edema. 
but this is not practical again because this is a wild animal in a monastery and um, no 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 nobody is really in charge of this veterinary side of it so so if you give some the 14 days i presume with steroid antibiotics the swelling will have gone down considerably and then uh, then you operate and then after operation you still give painkillers and anti-inflammatory maybe melasochem and so you, you you make sure that this part or this part is not uh, cover up, close up by this uh, reaction, granulation tissue. But uh, everything is easy to say after operation. Uh, but I mean, it's very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to prevent recurrence if the tissue closes up the, the duct. So that is one, one reason why uh, Hello. it is very difficult to do very difficult to do and uh, so so that, that is uh, the conclusion of this article now now you can see here the problem is the sublingual sublingual gland you have another run here another one here you see it's got a few few areas if it's just only alone of course it'll be easier but I, I, I think in this bear it's probably here and then here as well as the main one. So probably the whole thing becomes inflamed and granulated, causing a very big swelling under the tongue. So so we probably this one also involved I guess. Yeah. So I suspect the obstruction is probably here. Or maybe here. It's hard to tell but but definitely when you cut away this electrical tissue, I could see the, the, the duct here. You can see in the video the duct was. You can see the opening of the duct in the video. Part of the video you can see uh, the doctor didn't talk about it as well. It's about three, three to five millimeter across here. That's the size for the bear. For the dog, of course, it's smaller. It's smaller. In conclusion, that uh, the the, the marsupialization is a is a safer and simpler surgery, but. Uh, recurrence is, is quite common. Now if you want to do the detailed one, which is to, to excise the salingo and the and the mandibular gland, there's a lot of bleeding. There might be hemorrhage death from bleeding, infection and uh, difficulty in healing because this is a bear, a wild animal. Huh? So if you want to remove this, it will be practically not feasible because lots of bleeding death. And then uh, everybody would be unhappy because the bear would have died. That the bear, the bear cut his stress, has never been treated before. So that, that uh, re the re the muscularization is still the best best uh, approach. Now the bear is actually having a good uh, good enclosure, and then we will hope that uh, he can survive. He's eating food by putting the tongue to the side. Fat and then it just uh, it, and then arising of this uh, this uh, procedures operation, the bear is given dog food and much better protein and a big much bigger enclosure. So we are very happy, or at least I'm very happy for the bear cup. Dr. TG Ong and I are very happy, and we do we do see the bear now and then in the Tabawa Monastery. For more information, you can visit topiovets.com or contact one of the hotlines shown below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.